Who is Montrell Wade and why should you be excited that he committed to Boston College? I'm going to tell you exactly why on today's Locked On Boston College. You are Locked On Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On Boston College. I am your host, AJ Black. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Jeff Halfley's done it again, folks. Another commitment is in. This is six foot zero wide receiver Montrell Wade from Tyler, Texas. He's a three star wide receiver with a solid list of offers, and he committed to Boston College on Tuesday afternoon. Now, When you get three-star recruits, sometimes you say to yourself, oh, who's this? Why should I be excited? And I, I, I have to admit, when I didn't know much about Wade before I had dug into what he was about, I thought the same thing, right? Like, you get these guys, they're a dime a dozen. There's a few reasons why I think Montreal Wade is a big deal for this upcoming class. First of all, this is the third wide receiver BC has landed. They have Jaden Skeet. He's a wide receiver from Catholic Memorial. They have... Uh, Nate, Nate Johnson from Florida, a, a speedster. And then you have Montreal Wade, another speedster who is in track. He also, so Nate Johnson, he's a track star. Montreal Wade also does the hundred. You're getting, you're upgrading your wide receiver speed by such a large margin with this class of 2023 at the wide receiver position that you can't help but get excited about the kids that they're bringing in. I mean, you get it's been, it's a joke that I've almost come up with when I see these recruits, right? They're a two-star athlete. Now, when you think two-star athlete, you're like, "Oh, basketball and football." Nope. Every two-star athlete BC seems to be landing other than Holden Simmons, who's a basketball and football star, is a track and football star. As I said, Nate Johnson, track and football. Montrell Wade, track and football. Khalil Ali, track and football. I mean, you go down up and down this list, you're getting more and more of these um, when you're looking at the the athletes and wide receivers and, and defensive backs. That's what you're getting here. And so when Jeff Hathley says he's going out there to improve the speed, he's doing that on both sides of the ball, and he's showcasing it right now. Montreal Wade was a late offer in this cycle. I believe he was an April offer. If most kids that you get, you know, come in and, you know, they're 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 they've been offered for a year and a half, two years. Uh, you have those relationships. Kids like uh Jaden Skeet and even like Brian Sims, they've been around for a while with this program. Montreal Wade was brand new. And what ends up happening? is they go down to Texas, and I believe it was Vince Ogabase, the defensive line coach. He goes down there, sees this kid, you know, a fast, good wide receiver who plays down in the heart of Texas where there's talent all over the place. And he he makes him his, he makes that offer. Uh, and then what he goes and, you know, you, you, you build that relationship with the recruit and everything's getting better. Then you lock in that official visit. That that means when you're looking at recruiting that that recruit's ready to take that next step. Say, hey, you know, I've got offers from Colorado and San Diego State and and um, Texas Tech and Georgia Tech, but you know what? I am considering your school. I'm going to go check it out. And then that's where Jeff Halfley st- staff is the finisher. That is where they are able to 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 complete the deal. That's why you're seeing all these official visits happen. And they they have it happen and then all of a sudden boom, it's like commitment, 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 commitment. Because the kids fall in love with the staff, they fall in love with the school. And that's exactly what happened with Montreal Wade. Now, I got a chance to talk to Wade shortly before he announced and he gave me a great quote about what he loved about BC. He said, I chose Boston College because I feel they are, they are building something special out there. All the coaches have a very good knowledge of the game and they have chemistry out there. Also, I can go to the NFL with a master's and if my skills um, 
don't it doesn't last long in the league i can always find a successful job when i am done so yeah you see the same story over and over again the kids love the coaches the kids love the 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 value of a boston college education this connection with bc is is something that i think will keep him at boston college i you know you see the 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 kids that come to Boston College or commit and you can tell that maybe they're not the right fit. When you talk to Wade and he says things like this, you know that there's something much more superficial than, oh, I like this coach. It's He loves the school. He loves the idea of Boston College and I think that will keep him aboard. Now, Boston College now has three wide receivers in this class. As I said, Nate Nate Johnson, Jaden Skeet from Massachusetts, and now De- DeMontrell Wade. I love this wide receiver group because I think it's a good balance of talent and speed. Jaden Skeet is not a burner. He's the first commitment in this class. He's been committed to BC for, since 2020, but he's a solid kid with decent speed. He'll be good. Like He's not going to be anything... I, I, at least right now, he won't be anything super spectacular, but that's that's fine. Now, one of my friends I talked to who who loves recruiting stuff and talks to me about recruiting says when he saw when he saw the film of Nate Johnson, he goes Zay Flowers 2.0. Now that's that's lofty goals. You're not going to get a Zay Flowers every time you get a guy just because he's fast. Because Zay has more than just speed, right? But Nate Johnson is fast. And if he's as fast as he play, if he's fast and can put the football skills along with that, you know, the ability to run routes, the ability to hold catches, to be able to to get off the line, those types of things, he'll be really good. And Montreal Wade, I think, is the best of the trio, like in terms of total package, speed, good hands, good size, and he's from Texas. Anytime you get from Texas, you, you, that's a win in my book. And speaking of that. You know, we'll talk in just a moment about why the state of Texas is such a big deal. Uh, but I love this. Now, when we're looking at the grand scheme of things, this was the, one of the mystery recruits. And I knew this one was coming. As, a, as I said, I talked to him before he even announced it. There's one more mystery recruit that's still out there. And that is uh, probably going to be announced soon. And uh, when it does, if it's a, the date of a show, I will give you a whole show on it. If it's not, you will get a YouTube exclusive on this kid's commitment. Now, there's some other news, and we'll just go quickly through it so you know. Zach Yamauchi, I'm probably botching the poor kid's name, an offensive lineman from Bishop Gorman's High School in Nevada, one of those power programs, and where um, Cam Barfield, a running back on the program, played as well. Um, he's gonna be. He had a tweet out that there's going to be some interesting news coming out soon. Um He's visiting Stanford this weekend, so I really think it's going to come down to Stanford or BC for for Yamiuchi. We'll have to see how this visit goes this weekend. I, you know, I I I know from my conversations with him that he really likes BC, but I also feel with with visits, it's it's that law of um, recency f- uh, factor, and he's going to Stanford next, so he might just fall in love with Stanford, and that'll be it. Uh, so that's one to watch for. Antonio Cotman Jr. is doing his official visit this weekend and then is announcing on july 2nd now he only has one official visit lined up which is interesting because the kid's got a ton of offers he's a cornerback from virginia three-star recruit um he only has bc as one official that being said don't read too much into that because he is around virginia tech a lot so i wouldn't read that much but another one to watch for right there so Two new names that you want to make sure that you keep uh, uh, watching. And if you haven't, you can check out more on my thoughts on them on Twitter at AJBlack underscore BC. Now, in a moment, as I said, I'm going to talk a little bit about BC and the heart of Texas and why their recent success in the Lone Star State is nothing but good news for the Eagles. Now, let's talk about my good old friends over at Built Bar. You know how our friends at Built are always coming out with new amazing flavors? Well, this time, Built has truly outdone themselves with the mud pie flavor. I got my box of mud pies, and I, I, you know, I've talked about them. Got to try my first one earlier this week. I'm telling you, I love everything that Built does because I think they make a great product. This mud pie, you cannot believe the taste of this. It literally tastes like you're having, like, a, a, a mud pie, but like maybe like a, ch- a piece of chocolate cake it is that decadent, that good. And the best part, it's only 150 calories, 
16 grams of protein and only 8 grams of sugar. You're getting a absolutely delicious treat and it's good for you. Uh, you know, if you're if you if you have a sweet tooth, if you need something to get you through the day, you got to check out these bud 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 pies. The regular bars, they come in puffs. They're both super delicious and I can't recommend them enough. So what you need to do is head over to built.com and use promo code LOCK15 and you're going to get 15% off your order. And make sure you get there soon because these mud pies are going to come off the shelves real fast. And if you miss out, hey, I warned you about it. So make sure to head over to built.com and use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. Again, 15% off at built.com. This is AJ Black. Thank you all for listening this week. Uh, now, we're getting into the NBA Draft Night, and one live NBA Draft show is not enough for Locked On. The entire NBA Draft ch- NBA channel is going live on NBA Draft Night, so if you have a favorite NBA team, make sure you subscribe now to their Locked On YouTube channel so you get notified when they go live on NBA Draft Night. Now, we're talking about Montrell Wade, the newest commitment to the Boston College Eagles, and this is... Again, another Texas recruit that has committed to Boston College. It's only the second in this class, but it's becoming a pattern for Boston College. If you go back years, if you go pre... And I'll give Steve Adazio credit for starting this because he he absolutely did. But if you go back a few, to the early Adazio years, Texas was a non-factor for Boston College. Like, you may have gotten a few, like, random commits here or there, but BC never, like, they never put themselves, established themselves in that state, which is absolutely a bummer because Texas is like college football just wrapped into a high school package. Like, it is a, high school football there is at a level that is unseen anywhere else in this country. Southern, Northern, doesn't matter. Texas, I mean, if you've seen Friday Night Lights, you know what I'm talking about. Like, it is an absolutely big deal out there. And that you get un, you get such talent that you don't get anywhere else in the country. You get elite talent, you, you know, players that are well on their way to becoming all ACC, all American, because they're so good. I mean, I'll talk about it in the last segment, but like, the number one running back in the or number two running back in the country, a five star, Ruben Owens, who just went to Louisville. Where is he from? College Station, Texas, right? So for Boston College, they needed to to open up this pipeline. And yeah, they're not going to go out there and get ten recruits a, a year because it's tough, right? Like you're going across the country. There's tons of great schools in Texas, whether it's in the Big Twelve or or even even the AAC. Like you get Baylor, you get um, Texas, Texas A&M, Texas Tech, Houston. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on, TCU. Uh, so t- it's tough to get those players out of there. But credit to Steve Adazio, credit to Jeff Halfley, who have really started to get at least a couple recruits each class. And it started with Tyler Vrabel, but you got guys like Tyler Vrabel, Jalen Williams, Jaden Williams, you know, the wide receiver in the in the in the defensive back. This year it is now quarterback uh Jacoby Robinson and now wide receiver Montrell Wade. So you're getting these talented players here. And BC, like yeah, it's only like five or six right now, but on a roster of eighty five, that's a that's a sizable number. I mean, like you're gonna get uh, you know, the most kids are gonna come from Massachusetts or or even like Maryland. But when Texas is like the top five in terms of states, you're getting talented kids here from a state where high school football really matters. That's a good sign. You're you're upgrading the, the athleticism, the pedigree, and, the, and just the overall drive of kids because you're getting kids from that Texas area. And as the school continues to build relationships with these high schools down in Texas, it's going to continue to to bear fruit. And, you know, it won't be that long before BC starts getting four-star recruits out of Texas, right? They're getting three stars now, and there's nothing wrong with that. Jacoby Robinson, I'm excited to see what he can do. A quarterback, Montreal Wade's a very good wide receiver. But, when you know, there's, there's another level in that state, like many other states. 
it won't be that long before BC starting to get make moves to get some of those kids as well. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Now, in our final segment, I want to talk about the the state of NIL in in college football and how things in Louisville are are very different, but it really doesn't matter for Boston College, and I'll explain why in just a moment. This is Locked On Boston College, AJ Black here. So uh, over the week, last uh, Sunday, Monday, I think it was, as I mentioned, Ruben Owens, this running back, five-star recruit, number two running back in the country, committed to the Louisville Cardinals. And this is not the first massive get. I mean, this guy had 43 offers. He had offers from Alabama, Texas A&M. He think they were able to get him out of the Lone Star State, which was a pretty incredible, right? What you know, Louisville is is hitting home runs left and right on the recruiting trail. They have four recruits in the top 150 on 247 Sports. Something I mean, I think they've only had one in the last 13 years. They have four this year. So what are they doing? You just go to social media, you can see exactly what they're doing. They had their big official weekend visit this weekend, and Ruben Owens was part of it. And Louisville for their weekend, they had massive uh, 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 shipment of custom cars just parked on their football field. You could see any of the players. There's like 15 cars just parked, and they're like Lamborghinis and all the like you know Rolls Royces and all that stuff. And recruits can go take pictures with the nice cars. They also had them on a private jet, and they were doing all these things, right? So that kind of gives you a good glimpse of what Louisville is doing to entice players. Because if that's what they're showing, right, that there's, you know, luxury cars and, and private jets, what do you think they're doing behind the scenes, right? So that should give you a reason why Ruben Owens probably recruited. And it's, it's money. It's 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 money. All these guys are going to Louisville because of money. And, and, and they have a very good... NIL Collective. Now, I am, you know, you're probably waiting for me to poo-poo on this. I honestly don't care. I think players should be getting paid. I've said this on this podcast multiple times, and I'm happy that it hopefully is all above board now, so it's none of this, like, under the radar stuff. And if the under the radar stuff is happening where it's, like, gross or, like, enticing people to, to transfer because of NIL deals... Nah, I'm not a big fan of that. But if they're just getting paid because they're, you know, that's what their market value is, all the power to them. That's exactly what this this world needs to be. And, but you, you see all this, and you see Louisville now all of a sudden having an elite recruiting class. You're like, oh god, another ACC school that could outdo BC. Where does Boston College fall in this whole new process, right? So you got schools, USC, Oklahoma. Um, I'm sure Alabama is doing it. Texas A&M is very into it where they're just paying players left and right now. They're just, they're, they're not even, you know, they're, they're doing it as, as is now, is this going to hurt Boston college or help them? I'm here to tell you, it doesn't even matter, right? The guys that are making all these big bucks, the guys that are, are, are getting the big NIL deals. They are guys that Boston college would have never had a sniff of anyways. Guys like Quinn Ewers, Caleb Williams, Arch Manning, Ruben Owens. BC has never landed those guys. They never had a chance with those guys. So what's the difference between them being paid now uh, above board and what was going on for decades before that? Answer, there is none. And that's what really the, the, the factor is, right? Right now, you have these a handful of elite schools that are doing this, and then you have the other schools that are not. Now, that may stratify the, the, the college football, but guess what, folks? It's been stratified for years. It has been like this for decades, where there's the teams that are way above everyone else. Those blue bloods, we've had that word. That's exactly what it was. Blue blood is not something that came out of NIL. That came from recruiting. You had those blue bloods, and then you had everyone else. And that's exactly what it is right now. It just looks different. And so this whole new world, it's not going to impact Boston College that much in terms of NIL. The the we, we could talk about conference re- realignment and how that could hurt BC in the long run, but that's a different story. I'm not bringing that up right now. I'm talking about recruiting. I think BC is still able to go out and get a lot of the guys 
that they want to get. Like if you look at the class that they have now, it would be among the better classes than they've had in the last 20 years. It's it's lining up that way. Now that's good, right? Your BC can still do business as usual and hope that they can pull that off. You still worry that they're not going to be able to get that elite recruit, but when have they ever, I mean, if you're going to just bring up Brian Toll to me, I'd say that was 20 years ago. BC's last elite recruit was 20 years ago. So BC, to me, that means BC doesn't get elite recruits. And that's exactly what it is, right? They don't get elite recruits. They don't. Uh, they get their guys, the four stars, the three stars, and they're going to continue to do that. Now, Golden, uh, my like ideal vision and vision of how things would be for BC, they're going to get those kids that want that education, that see the pro future for B, uh, from Jeff Halfies. I mean, things that they've talked about. And they like Boston, right? They're going to go for that every time. I mean, you're going to be able to get your guys. Now, my elite vision of where BC could go with this I still haven't heard BC doing an NIL collective and I see schools like Louisville. I see NC state doing it. You are starting to see other programs starting to do that. BC has wealthy donors. You don't need to pay recruits $5 million to come to BC, but you can get good recruits for 30,000, 40,000 and pay them that much. You could do that. And there's there's wealthy donors that would do that. So to get a collective together to maybe grab one or two elite recruits as we get closer, you know, to, to say to like, a, you know, a five star like Samson Okunlola, I'm just throwing a name out there like, hey, look at I know you're looking at Alabama and Georgia and Ohio State, but we can keep you close and we can pay you. That could help the, bridge that gap. I think down the road. That would be a great thing to see. And hopefully, you keep hearing about how, from the AD and everything, how NIL has to match the school's uh, philosophy. I worry that that's not going to match their philosophy. And if that's the case, that's a little worrisome. But um, I think that would be a nice blend. You get your your kids that are always come to Boston College, and then you get maybe a, a, a treat. You know what I mean? So that was my, just my thoughts. Now, on Friday... I'm sure I'll have more recruiting news and hopefully we'll have more to discuss about everything in the world of Boston College. Thank you all so much for listening. This is AJ Black. You can follow me on Twitter, AJ Black underscore BC. And make sure to check us out on YouTube. Just look up Locked On Boston College. We're the first thing you find. And make sure to hit that subscribe button. We know it. you will. It'll make a big difference and help the podcast out. Have a great day, everyone. Stay cool. See you soon.